Uh, my first guest has been a resident of Southern California after she left her native Chicago for over 30 years. She's shown in many places, many, many places. She's going to be showing in Tokyo later this year and Manhattan Beach. We'll learn all about that and more when we discover the art of Nicolette Caminas. Nicolette, welcome to the show. Thank you. Do you like, uh, do you like Nicolette or yeah. Nicolette? Uh, Is the accent et or? It's Nicolette. Nicolette. It's what I like, yes. Okay, Nicolette. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and it's Cominos. 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 Yes. Wow. It's, it's it, more like It rhymes Greek. with uh, Dominos. Dominos Vibiscum. Yes. Cominos <laughs> Vibiscum. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of different rhymes. Okay, people okay, wow, that. wow, wow. That's a good one. That's you know, a good one. I we, like that. Thank just, you. Just our Latin humor here. So, um, hey, do you consider yourself a painter, sculptor, artist? Uh, what, what's what's the yeah, best? Yeah, that's a great, great question because I've really been grappling with that um, lately because I was trained as a painter and I I love working two dimensionally and so. Over the years, my practice kind of expanded. I got away from painting on canvas, and I started to work on um, plywood and using a lot of industrial material combined with craft and fine art material. And the work kind of expanded out, and I guess you would call it uh, assemblage. Uh, I never really thought of it as collage, but the material started to kind of push out into the 3D realm, but it was really mixed media and was not sculpture. And then about six years ago, I, um, I decided, I, I felt compelled to really try to make sculpture. And What brought um, that on? Well, I, I really was wondering about that myself because it was intuitive, but I think it also happened because um, there was about a 10 year time period where I had a series of illnesses. Um, I had a kidney disease, a liver disease, and cancer. And, Oof. you know, I was really um, just kind of, I kept working, but mostly I had my family, um, my husband was building a business, I was teaching art, and um, I, I was a program director, and we had two kids, but I was still making my art, but I had, uh, it slowed down tremendously, Ooh. you know, my output. And, but the, the most intense part of it was the cognitive effect I had from some of the medication. Oh, no. You know, noticeably, notably the chemo. And so, you know, I was going along, I was trying to figure out how to get back in my rhythm, and I wasn't really kind of totally aware of how much I had changed, but, you know, I knew I had, and, but I was like, okay, I just keep working, keep working. And I was doing these, um, I was a program director for an art, in, um, a nonprofit art company. And we, I did a lot of outreach art for families and kids. And as the program director, I developed these workshops. And so my job was to get the material, hire the artist, and then we would go around the city and promote them. But, you know, at night I would be like cutting out, oh, a thousand little paper circles or, oh, right. you know, gra just because you really want the workshop to be interesting and you want the families to have material that they love. And they were really successful, but I also noticed that it was a really spontaneous way of making art. And I think intuitively I realized, okay, this is something that feels very good for me to do. And, and you've pushed that into your... And I pushed it into the sculpture realm, and I feel like it was the physicality of the sculpture. What are we looking at here? Um, this is actually what I consider a mixed media piece. It's not quite in the sculptural realm. Because it comes off the wall. Right. And um, it's missing the important element of being able to do a circular so view of it. Just our view on yeah. two, there's always going to be that limited quality. Right, yeah. and I think that's super and, important. And, and what year is this? Um, this? I started this series about three years ago. And, and uh, uh, it's, I'm looking at it, it's like a rebar, right? 
It's um, the boxes are cast out of uh, aluminum and they're from cardboard boxes because usually my practice centered around looking in the surrounding area and finding objects that really interested me and so they were usually simple commonplace objects and they became my source for 2D imagery and also for sculptural forms. And, and uh, you said you were trained as a painter? Yeah. Where, where were you trained? I went to University of Illinois and Southern Illinois University. Oh, okay. Okay. You got a master's there? No, I didn't. I went to, um, I transferred at U of I and at that time I was a single parent and I was finishing up my degree in psychology oh. and then I decided to go on and get another degree in, uh, I got a BFA in art. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, and now this is definitely, it's not mixed media or because it comes off the wall, you, you call it mixed media? I do. Yeah? I do because I've learned that um, walking around the sculpture, I think has a very important aspect to being a sculptor, a sculpture, <laughs> not being a sculptor. But, and so, and I kind of recently came to this decision. Um, with this work, I was really, you know, as with the, this is, the piece that we just saw is kind of a reaction to the piece that was before at the boxes with the bands and this kind of delicate relationship and also that the, there's a gravitational element to it. And in this piece, I really wanted to find, to work with tension in a different way. So the tension is behind, there's uh, wires behind this piece, which you'll see a little bit more in the slide after this, which will give you a side view. Let, let's see the side view. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's, I mean, it's a radically, just in reproduction alone, let alone, I mean, obviously meeting in person is, is uh, it's radically different from side to front. Right. And yet you don't consider it a sculpture because you can't walk around it. Right, and, but I really wanted to use the wall and I was really trying my sculpture or my 2D that enters into the 3D realm is really about um, in not creating mass, but building things through using the, um, uh, the negative space and also incorporating the wall at this point. And so I really, this piece I, I found um, very satisfying to me because a lot of my sculpture I was thinking, ah, it's so frontal, you know, but here, I felt like each of the sides had something to bring and that the wall was a really important element. And so, but yet I started to realize, okay, this still isn't sculpture, but what is sculpture and why am I, why am I making it? What is the point of it? Out of curiosity, just out of curiosity, what if this was shown somewhere and the wall wasn't white? Do you consider the white wall to be part of the of the piece? No, I, th I, I feel like it's a really adaptable piece. Okay. And now, I'm not really so concerned about it. Who, who would you say is a primary influence in this approach to, I, want to, I still want to call it sculpture, but wall sculpture, or as you call it, mixed media. Is there a primary influence here? Well, I was really, when I was in college, I was really um, influenced by the art Povera movement, Antonio Tapia's and the feminist movement of that time and the dialogue about incorporating craft and industrial material in your work, but also looking to the everyday and finding out and looking toward the wealth of information that's in simple objects in terms of looking at them, trying to um, prompt reflection about them, looking at their place in this culture, but also the memories that they could elicit or the psychological associations. And then the other part of it was, as I said, I was a single mom. I had, and my family was super important to me. And so finding a way to balance my artwork with my art practice with raising a child, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna look at what's surrounding me and draw from that. And as, as opposed to worry about precious materials and, and right. art, art store finds. Exactly, which is one of the reasons why I switched from painting on canvas. Um, I had a professor who totally understood my, my uh, situation. He said, try plywood. 
you know, you like texture. Wow. You can use drywall compound, and I think you can get the same results. So I could easily, I had a little studio at the university, but I also worked in my kitchen late at night when my daughter was sleeping. So those were, and that also went with some of the um, dialogue with the feminist movement. And we had this really great fiber department within the art program and the professor and the instructors there were very involved in the feminist movement and um, you know not only did they teach me about using craft material combining it but they were supportive and they had this a lot of conversation about being pragmatic how do you make work that fits into your life work that you can use that you can move that you don't need to depend on other people that's ah, affordable. Like, uh, so, so that's like getting off the Jay DeFeo, take the right. rose out of the building with a crane. Uh, yes. yeah. <laughs> so let, let's, exactly. we, have, we have more of your work to look at here. And, and uh, what year is this sculpture? This is one of my newest ones. Oh, wow. Um, and it's kind of the end of a series and the beginning of another one. And it is and it isn't a maquette for a larger piece. Um, and this one you can fully walk around, so I consider it, ah, finally, sculpture. here I am, sculpture. But I realized that while I was doing this, because these pieces have companion drawings, and this sculpture is made out of dry, um, ceramic shell, which is a very industrial material, and the process is very um, industrial. My husband owned a foundry, I worked for him, we had a staff, and the machinery that twirls around the ceramic shell runs 24 7 and you have to have somebody there to dip it roll Ooh. it in sand and so the staff was a big part of my being able to make and use this material um, and so I'm not quite sure why I said that but um, anyway the um, so, oh, I, I mean, because these are very heavy compared to the drawing that you'll see next. Uh, and so I was like, what? Let's see the drawing. Oh, well, this is, yeah, okay. Obviously, is this on paper or yeah, on plaster? Yeah, it's on vellum. Oh, and wow. And a lot of it is done with needle and thread. And uh, it's varnished paper. And it's, uh, a lot of it is, like I said, using needle and thread in lieu of pencil. And then I've cut into it and... Uh, it's a mixture of oil paint and pastel. But do you consider this to be also mixed media as opposed to drawing? You know, we're not, you're not really going for illusionistic space, right? Right. Yeah, right. so, it, so, so yeah, it still yeah. has an object hood to it. Yes, and, yeah. um, but it's so much lighter than the sculpture. So I'm like, well, what, what is that about? Because I was just kind of working in this very intuitive way. And then I realized it was kind of exposing my fundamental difference between how I cognitively see sculpture and how I cognitively see painting. Like when I look at a painting, it's kind of a signal for me to enter into an internal world. And, but with sculpture, I look at it more as if you're looking toward the horizon. I'm very aware of it being in the physical realm. You know, and I think that has to do with um, really being able to walk around it. You're fully aware that is it an object and with sculpture, you have to deal with gravity. You know, with painting and drawing or mixed media on the wall, you have so much freedom. But once you enter into the realm of sculpture, gravity is a concern. But, um, you know, also for me, it was a cognitive switch as how I looked at it. And it brought to mind what this art historian, Ann Wagner, Oh, yeah. Yeah, had said about when she was talking about, she gave a talk about that show that was at um, the uh, Schimmel, not uh, the Hauser -Worth. Worth Gallery. And she said she was also trying to explain, like, what she was trying to find out what is the essence of sculpture. And she said it was remembrance. And, you know, remembrance in, term of, in terms of remembrance of the dead is how I extrapolated it. Like, Oh, I bought poppy. He bought poppies in remembrance of the dead soldiers, and so that really resonated to me. And I think that that's why I think it's so important to be able to walk around a sculpture. Wow! And to see those four, you know, four different angles, 
so that you, because it really connects me to my place, my physical presence in the world. Wow. And that's why I really kind of now fully, I, I love sculpture for that reason. And I don't know if, you know, with every sculpture, if that's a given, this thing about remembrance, but it's something that I'm going to try to work with more in the future, and um, well, which I think is pretty exciting. Well, we've been talking about the 360 degree sculptural. Aliza has been making a two dimensional drawing. Uh -huh. A sketch of you. Elisa's in the sketcher's seat, and I'm going to hand it to you now. Oh, and, wow! And uh, you can you can uh, check it out. Fantastic. And uh, here, hold it up to the camera now. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Very All right. Good, very so good. that is Elisa's sketch of Nicolette Cominos. Yes. Thank you for.